very good and welcome um so next speaker is uh, professor halin saka from university of cyprus he works on the cms experiment at the lhc and he is going to talk about the the searches on the heavy neutrinos and leptoquarks and seesaw at the lhc so stage is yours please go ahead okay thank you um, you have 30 minutes you have 25 to 30 minutes so. okay thank you um yes yeah, so thanks again for the invitation um in these 20 30 minutes we have i want to talk about briefly about uh, searches for uh, various standard models uh, beyond standard model theories at the lhc including heavy neutrinos leptoquarks and uh, CISO and similar models so let's get started um we already said that these are uh, uh beyond standard model uh physics and if you want to sort of um, put these on some sort of a uh, context um, with respect to standard model on the left you can see this uh, sort of cartoon map of the standard model particle content and uh, we can expand this either in the uh, fermionic sector um, through uh, specific heavy uh, leptons on quarks inspired by various models, including uh, CISO mechanism, which we'll talk about. Um, or you can expand the, the gate sector through uh, vector leptoquarks or uh, heavy partners of the Z boson and the W boson, and we'll also talk about these. Or through expanded scalar sector through particles like, uh, again, leptoquarks or uh, specific types of the uh, CISO neutrinos and other, other models. And, and of course, the ones we'll talk about are not the only ones um, that fit into this picture, of course, um, uh, but merely just a few examples. Uh, but it's good to keep in mind this sort of picture of uh, how these different uh, models uh, fit with respect to what, what, what part of the standard model you're expanding into. Um, and if it wasn't clear from the names of those models, all these left on all these searches are actually in in leptonic signatures. And what I mean by that is that these are in final states heavily characterized by the presence of the uh, leptons. And uh, this might be obvious or familiar to, to most people, but if not, it's worth mentioning that leptonic signatures at the LHC are very useful probes for uh, new physics or uh, standard model measurements because they, they do a great job in suppressing the uh, multi-jet uh, uh, processes, uh, contributions from multi-jet processes. And on the right, if you look at the uh, sort of cartoon rate sort of diagram of these uh, various processes in the LHC, um, you see that there are many orders of magnitude difference between the W, the Z boson production, or the just the jet production at 10 to 3 to 10 to 5 level in this uh, y-axis to the uh, more interesting signatures uh, within this yellow box at the bottom. Uh, and, and leptons basically help you to, to get down to the uh, more interesting more air processes easily at the LHC. And of course, this is aided by the excellent uh, lepton reconstruction uh, detection capabilities of CMS and Atlas and uh, uh, reconstruction processes. Yes? I think the screen is frozen, so we are still seeing your first slide. Are you not seeing the... Ah, okay, sorry. Yeah, apologies. Yes, uh, your screen was frozen, and I thought uh, you were still talking before changing the slides. Oh, no. Is it changing now or no? No, no. Uh, can you unshare or share it again? Okay, Maybe? I will. Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, my bad. Okay, sorry about that. No, that's it would have been very, very difficult to follow uh, <laughs> Yeah. without the... Um, uh, Okay. Is it changing now? It's just trying yeah, to change. Yeah, it's changing now. Ah, okay. Oh. Sorry about that. Yeah. So the cartoon picture I was referring to was on the left, and we'll use it again in, during the talk. So it's okay. It's just to show, uh, keep in mind where the uh, each of these models sort of uh, sit with respect to standard model. On the right is this diagram of various cross sections at the uh, at the LHC and how leptonic signatures are instrumental in, in getting us from very high rate processes like jet processes at the level of 10 to 5 in this uh, cross-section diagram to uh, many orders of magnitude uh, 
joining this yellow box. Can you repeat okay. your mind to mute, please? Ah, okay. All right. So, um, as I said that the final states will be leptonic, I also want to say one specific um, type of background that is shared and common to all these searches. And, and this is um, this is the so-called misidentified or uh, fake lepton background. And you'll see this again and again in all the analyses we look at today. Um, so to set the stage, basically when you do a leptonic search, these sort of have two different uh, categories. One is leptons originating from W or Z or Higgs boson sources. We as in the experimental, so let's say domain, we call these prompt or let's say good or desirable leptons. And usually this is what you go after and everything else then becomes labeled as misidentified or if you hear uh, the term fake, although that's a misnomer, um, misidentified or fake leptons. And of course you might say, what is a fake lepton? Um, and that usually actually means something very specific. Um, what I have here in this diagram in the middle is, a, is, is one such uh, case of a P meson decay through a electrolytic interaction where you can get um, various leptons in your tau with associated uh, hydronic activity in the detector. And this sort of process and decay is sort of what we have usually in mind when we refer to something as a misidentified lepton. And although this may look like a, a not so common process, it turns out that if you have a drillian like environment with Ws or Zs plus, uh, let's say, jets, the rate of such leptons being produced from um, flavored uh, meson decays is at the level of uh, 10 to minus four. And while that looks like a small number, that happens to be exactly the, let's say the ratio of uh, W or Z uh, production cross-section at the, at the LHC to, uh, which may give you one or two uh, prompt leptons as, we as, as I just defined above, to, um, to the level of uh, dibosons or, or TT bar. So this ratio of 10 to four, actually makes um, major n lepton standard model processes and can be one or two in, in this picture, a, a major background source for the n plus one lepton uh, final state. So it takes, it takes processes like W and Z sitting here on this diagram on the left um, at a uh, very high cross section at 10 to five uh, picobarn level. And it makes it relevant for processes that sit at the uh, 10 picobarn level. Uh, because of the uh, of this uh, cross section hierarchy, let's say, and of course, this this number ten to four is for environments like Drillian or uh, W jets, and if you go to TT bar, where you actually do get uh, hard uh, B quarks, the rates uh, is is even higher, and then they become more much more uh, prevalent. On the right is an illustration of this effect, so uh, I just want you to, to draw your attention to the right top plot where uh, we are looking at a dilepton mass spectrum in trilepton events. And here you clearly see a peak at around 90 GV at the Z mass, which correspond to events that give you actually uh, Z2 LL plus jets, where the, one of the jets, the hydronic activity is, is producing a misidentified lepton, uh, mostly through these sources. And you can see that uh, you, you get many of these. These are uh, not a few events, these are 10 to five uh, events. So these are order. 100,000 million events we're talking about with very, very generic uh, selection requirements. And this is a common theme again on, on all leptonic searches. Okay, with this sort of introduction, let me go into um, the first of the mechanisms uh, of the models I wanna talk about. So let's introduce the CSOM mechanism. As you just heard in the previous uh, talks, um, the tunes are, are massless in the so-called, let's say vanilla standard model. And the CSOM mechanism is typically used as a framework to accompany the, the Higgs mechanism, the electric symmetry breaking mass model, to introduce, to induce natural low uh, particle masses. And uh, the sort of, uh, it naturally gives you two different mass, uh, let's say eigenstates, uh, depending on exactly how you set up your uh, sort of uh, model, of course, where one can have a mass that can be decoupled from the Higgs mechanism, um, here labeled as a new heavy state, and in proportion, your, your other mass eigenstate can be as light uh, in proportion. Um, and of course, it's a useful thing because otherwise, if you want to accommodate neutrino masses in, this, in the standard model, 
um, you may get uh, what some call uh, out of place, let's say, uh, coupling strengths, you cover couplings, uh, many orders of magnitude smaller than the couplings needed for the uh, other fermions in the standard model, as shown by this uh, right hand side diagram. I think this will take you something to about 10 to minus 12 level. Uh, if you were to expand this uh, blue line. Um, there are three incarnations that exist of the CISO mechanism, um, assuming that you minimally extend the standard model particle content and you keep standard model denormalizable. And these are typically labeled as type one, two, and three uh, CISO models, depending on whether you add a singlet fermion, an SU2 triplet scalar, or SU2 triplet fermion to standard model. And of course, these additions, did, they're not expected to exist by themselves. So there's always some sort of UV completion that one has to do to, uh, to, to build a more realistic uh, model. Um, and these could be things like left light symmetric models or, or, or greater uh, gauge groups, uh, grand unification and so on. And model builders often, when they do these things, they don't only uh, address neutrino masses, but also uh, uh, tackle other problems like uh, creating a dark matter candidate or uh, uh, addressing matter, and matter asymmetry and, and so on. However, experimentally, when we do search for such models, often a single type uh, of particle is assumed uh, for simplicity. And today I'll be talking about recent uh, uh, type one and type three searches from CMS and Atlas in final states with leptons, as we all said, including some exotic objects. And um, if you wanna read about a type two search on charge scalars, you can refer to this uh, Atlas thing that I, I, I give here. Um, we'll also get the singlet model. Um, the singlet model is, is the, the simplest extension, as I said, is a type one CISO model. And here we only expand the standard model particle content by a, a singlet uh, fermion here labeled as N in this cartoon diagram on the right. And it's labeled as, uh, it's also referred to as a heavy neutral lepton uh, in literature, H and L for short. Um, since this is a singlet, the production and decay of these, these uh, such particles at the LHC um, uh, is through their mixings with some metal neutrinos, again, as shown in this diagram. Here, N is our uh, signal particle. And one thing to keep in mind, which will come in handy in the next few, uh, next few uh, slides, is that the lifetime of such particles is actually non negligible, especially at low masses, because lifetime here depends uh, to the fifth power to the particle mass you assume. Um, there are many models. I, I advertise this as a minimal extension to the standard model, but of course, you can have non minimal models with more than one particle content. And, we will discuss one such example, the left right symmetric model today, but you can also have other things like uh, composite heavy neutral leptons and so on. So uh, opportunities are not by any means uh, limited. And the most important characteristic of such uh, signatures is the uh, variety of uh, leptonic final states with two or three lepton decays. So you can imagine this picture on the left where I have these numbers, uh, one, two, three, and four in the final state objects. And typically searches consider leptons at positions one and two, and then positions three and four, um, you can get leptons or, or jets depending on how you assume the W is, is decaying. And the major kinematic decider is of course the mass hierarchy that you have between the uh, W and the heavy neutral lepton. And depending on whether one is heavier or much heavier than the other, you can get very uh, diverse set of final states, including long-lived particles, as we'll talk about, compressed, compressed spectra, soft leptons, or merged W decay products when, when this W2 is, is reboosted. Okay, so let's see the, uh, an example search from CMS on, the, on this models. Um, there is an early 13 TV CMS search for my own neutrinos. Um, early meaning here actually is 2016 data set. So this is only a, a quarter of our total run to data set at the moment. Um, the analysis probes EMU um, couplings of such uh, heavy neutral leptons in the mass range of one to a thousand GeV. And because this is such a diverse uh, mass range, a multi-binning approach uh, had to be used where we bin things in and leading lepton PT, 
leading lepton, if you go back to the previous page, is the lepton that, that is uh, coming from the first instance of the W decay. And this helps us to basically set a proxy for the heavy neutral lepton W mass hierarchy. So when you're probing uh, lower values of, of N, you expect uh, the different behavior in the leading lepton PT than when you go to, to heavy, uh, heavy neutral lepton masses. Um, and of course, you do get particularly compressed and soft spectra, especially for the trailing to leptons when you go to very light uh, masses for the end. Um, the analysis um, approaches uh, adopts this multi-binning approach, which is illustrated here on the left. I don't expect you to go all over all, all, all these pins, but, but to, it suffices to say that in this big mass range between one to a thousand GeV, you see that there's a sensitivity loss at the, at the low end uh, below uh, 10 GeV. So with this sort of prelude in mind, what CMS has done very recently is a, a full run to analysis on dedicated low mass HNLs um, and with of course non negligible lifetimes. And in the limit that N becomes light, this entire sort of set of particles L and L prime that you see on this cartoon on the right become displaced. Um, so the very distinguished sort of distinguishing characteristic property of such searches is one prompt lepton coming from this first instance of decay L and all the other decay products originating from the heavy neutral lepton being displaced. So this particular search, since they're looking for a tri-lepton uh, vinyl state, um, a secondary vertex is sought after using L, L prime and L double prime. And its displacement with respect to the primary vertex becomes a very useful uh, discriminator. And of course, one has to, in order to do, do, do such things at low PT, you need dedicated studies to make sure that displaced track and vertex reconstruction and lepton identification work as expected. But once you do all that, um, you end up with a picture which is dominated by, um, again, our old friends, the B-meson decays. In, in this case, they're not giving you one fake lepton, as I was uh, explaining earlier, but through a cascade decay or B to C, C to light leptons, you actually get correlated double fake or double misidentified leptons from, from a common uh, source. And, um, and this you can very clearly see on the left-hand side, um, the mass plot of the second and the third leptons. This is the mass of the L prime and L double prime. Um, and you see this very, very uh, clear uh, sort of uh, cutoff at around four to five GeV, which is the uh, typical mass of a B meson. And uh, you see that the color scheme of the background changes from correlated fakes, which is or correlated uh, misidentified leptons, which is shown in light green to dark green as you go across this uh, boundary. And um, of course, depending on the HNO mass you're probing, your, your signal mass will sit at different values of this uh, phase space. But the spinning is very uh, sensitive to the nature of the background. And then the analysis uh, proceeds to define low and high, high mass regions, as you see on the right, and, and, and probe different uh, secondary vertex displacement bins uh, in different flavor and charge channels, probing both lepton number conserving and violating uh, final states. And the results obtained are, an example of the results obtained are given on the right in the context of myron and Reno's coupling to electrons, um, where we can see that the analysis sets uh, the most stringent limits at 10 to minus six level on the coupling squared at 10 GeV. And of course, analysis probes much more than this, including muon mixings and, and interact scenarios, uh, which you can find in the paper. It's worth to say that Atlas has a similar search with partial random data set and probing on the muon signatures, uh, muon couplings, which I believe they will be updating it uh, shortly with run two. Um, okay, let's switch gears to the other uh, CSO model that we discussed at the beginning. Um, this is the, one of the non-minimal models where we have a left light symmetric model where we describe or define a right-handed SE2 group to standard model, so we expand it. And sometimes this is done to motivate, let's say, parity violation in the weak interactions in SM as a broken symmetry, so you, you introduce uh, heavy partners of, of, uh, of, of the standard model gauge bosons. So here we have a WR as a heavy partner, and Otherwise, the decay, the production decay diagram, which as you can see from the cartoon on the right, is exactly the same as the case where with the truly minimal model, except we swap all the Ws with the W, uh, with this heavy Ws, uh, so, so to speak. 
Um, however, what this does to experimental searches is that it, it actually opens up a whole new phase space where you can use various result and collimated jet techniques using narrower wide jets uh, with large or small radius uh, clustering to do um, a, a, a new search, let's say, although the underlying model is very similar, using boosted um, jets. And in this case, because this having lepton decays into uh, a lepton and, and two, two quarks, you're actually looking at uh, big radius jets with a lepton uh, inside. So this is a very particular and different final state than the, the, the one we were talking a moment ago, although it's, it's a very, very similar signal, uh, signal model. Same family of signal models, let's say. So the analysis probes such signatures in the result and uh, boosted uh, topologies. And of course, one thing to really, that is really interesting that stands out is that you're looking for, again, um, the type of background, which is given here, this is in this cartoon at the right bottom, where a top decay can give you two jets from originating from the W, and if the B, the same B that we've been already seeing in the context of misidentified leptons, because leptonically, you end up with a signature that is very, very similar to your signal. So this is the type of background that you consider in inside searches. And again, this is an example of how prevalent these, what we call these misidentified leptons being uh, in all leptonic uh, final states. As you can see on the left, there is a bit of an excess in the search, which may be something exciting. Um, so if you go to the next page, um, we can see the impact of this excess, which is at the 2.8 sigma uh, level um, in the electron channel. Uh, this is visible also, of course, in the, in the uh, upper uh, limits we set on, the, on, on such particles. But, but uh, again, 2.8 is, is, is in the range of to be hacked for run three. And uh, otherwise, the search is uh, setting bounds on uh, the most stringent bounds on, on such models uh, in the mass of the right handed uh, W versus heavy neutrino uh, mass plane. Uh, up to 5 TV on the, on the WR mass, as, as illustrated here, electron channel on the left and the muon channel uh, on the right. Um, there's an atlas search or actually a pair of atlas searches with partial again onto data set that probes uh, similar models, which I provide the links here for your convenience. Okay, now let's switch gears from heavy, heavy fermions um, at the singlet to SU2 triplet. Such models within the type Type within CISO are called type three. So you introduce now a sigma zero and sigma plus sigma minus as opposed to just a neutral particle as we did before. The most important difference of such models is that um, you get um, now things that are charged under SU2. So your dominant production mechanism is no longer the mixing, but the electric interactions. So apart from the unknown mass of such particles, the cross section is really decided at a given mass. Um, but the decays of such uh, particles uh, happen through their mixing with some model leptons. Um, and uh, indeed, that's what's uh, sought after. So we look for two heavy uh, fermions that decay into a set of uh, WZs or Higgs bosons accompanied by energetic leptons and neutrinos. Um, one can do a search on prompt decays, and indeed, that's what I will be talking about in the next few slides. But it's also, it's important to say that um, it's possible to get displaced signatures on such models if you make these mixing angles small enough and you will not only be making the signatures displaced and only reducing their acceptance in let's say prompt searches, but what you'll be doing actually is changing the branching ratio behavior or the decay behavior of the sigma. So if you actually make the decays really displaced, you see that the sigma start to decay into one another and your uh, branching ratio assumptions start to break. So this is a good, uh, in my mind, uh, venue for a future search, dedicated search for such, such particles. Um, LHC searches for such triplets span two, three or four lepton signatures with jets and missing ET uh, included. And just to see that on the right, I, I have this cartoon with these yellow boxes and this shows you basically the interplay of MET, LT, and HT. So these are the sum of the, uh, let's say the missing energy, MET, the sum of the leptonic particles, uh, some of the PTs of the leptonic particles, LT, and the sum of the hadronic particles, jets, HT. And, and you can see that this signature, uh, this model can give your signatures, which can be very high in magnitude in any one of these three dimensions. 
and in red, these are used in uh, in various searches in in uh, CMS and Atlas. Okay, um, before we go further, I want to take a one minute detour on a search, an inclusive search from CMS on uh, in uh, multi leptonic uh, signals. Um, this is uh, the search given here, exit twenty one zero zero two. So this is a search that categorizes the entire uh, three plus lepton uh, landscape um, with somewhat standard selection requirements. And then, which you can see here on this diagram, um, on this histogram, uh, where you have uh, many, many pins that ranging from uh, three leptons to four leptons within the task. And then the search uses uh, MBA techniques to achieve signal specific sensitivity for heavy fermions, which we'll talk about. This is why I'm introducing it right now, and also later for lepton points. And various variables, additional variables are used as given in this table before, uh, below for uh, as input to the MBA training. Um, of course, and if you don't like, or if you don't believe in MBA, uh, let's say if you're skeptic, um, uh, similar sensitivity can be achieved and indeed the search goes on to do that to with providing uh, signal agnostic uh, binning schemes, which you can sort of, it's illustrated on the left-hand side. I don't, again, I don't expect you to go over all these pins, but it gives you a sense of uh, how the phase space is split and looked in, in, in hundreds and thousands of uh, bins and orthogonal regions and various schemes with high met HD, LT, and SD. So with this technology, we can go ahead and look for, again, this uh, heavy fermions in, in, in type 3 seesaw. And the CMS analysis sets the most stringent limits on type 3 seesaw decaying into um, any kind of lepton flavor, which is indicated by this flavor triangle in red at the right bottom. Um, and uh, the limits are at the range of uh, roughly a TEV, give or take, depending on your exact assumption on the flavor coupling of these uh, particles. Atlas has a similar search, which is illustrated on the left, that uses uh, two and three and four lepton final states together, but it only probes the flavor democratic scenario, which is in the CMS case is indicated by this yellow box, which is around the TV. And both, both analyses are very comparable to each other. Um, one detour I want to take, although this wasn't sort of advertised in the title, let's say, is an, a neighboring model to type 3 CISO is vector like lepton extensions to set up model. And indeed, uh, CMS analysis with these uh, multi binning machinery also probes such, such uh, final states. And one thing I want to say that all the, all the limits, all the other limits I talk about today, all the sensitivity is at the TV scale. Um, such models are actually also still possible and viable and unexplored at 100 GV, uh, 200 GV uh, electroweak scale. So I just wanted to say that, that this is not all a heavy uh, particle search program. Okay, let's switch to our final subject on leptoquarks. Um, these are, as you probably know, as the name suggests, new bosons carrying both lepton and baryon uh, number. And they are commonplace in theories be, be, besides SUSY, uh, like grand unification and compositeness. Um, of course, these are, this is not a new idea. This is a very, or quite old, old, old idea, I would say. But it has enjoyed recent, uh, let's say, popularity due to lepton flavor universality violation hints in, in BDKs, particularly the couplings to bees, taus, and uh, mews. Um, and this takes us to one important point. Traditionally, leptoquarks are probed in flavor diagonal scenarios where you assume a leptoquark coupling to leptons and quarks of a given uh, flavor family. But this recent sort of uh, ideas and hints point to non minimal flavor structure um, that, that now experiment, experiments at the LHC are probing. And indeed, I'll briefly talk about two searches that probe the this so-called uh, flavor matrix with top quarks, leptons, taus, and B quarks, which are indicated by this uh, three by three matrix on the right. Um, the first set of searches I wanna talk about is from CMS. Um, again, in the context of this multi-bin uh, inclusive uh, lepton search and, and an Atlas search that does something very similar uh, in the same exact same final states. So this is a search for a family of scalar leptoquarks in the full run two data set coupling to a top and a lepton of any flavor. So top E, top mu, or top tau as illustrated in the diagram on the right. And of course, when your leptoquark is quite a heavy particle, you're looking at a final state multi-leptons and quite energetic uh, jets and leptons. So 
you're looking for broad access in the tails of effective mass or SD distributions, which is what CMS and Atlas does. Um, using MVA techniques um, and two, three, and four left and final states, CMS and Atlas are able to probe uh, such models and set limits at 1.2 to 1.5 TV range. But of course, the important thing is that the probe also goes down all the way to the top pass since, you know, as the recent tensions in the B sector show, we don't know what we will get. So it's good to really probe the entire mass range for a given model. Um, and, and, and this is a, this is a for sort of a new family of elliptic searches that, that probe this flavor off diagonal, let's say, uh, couplings. Similarly, CMS and Atlas also looks for um, pure third generation fermion searches. And I just want to quickly say this. So there exist searches from CMS and Atlas with full run two looking into couplings to a top new B tau final state, uh, which is the most favored uh, decay scenario for such models uh, as illustrated in this cartoon on the right. Um, and these are of course, as, 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 as you can tell, final states with at least 120 tau lepton and at least two jets with B tagging. Um, because in the searches we use hadronic taus and hadronic activity, we, we, don't, we may not have leptons to trigger on, although that was, as I said, is a very useful thing to do. So these searches differ in, in everything else I presented today that there actually is an HD met triggered data set. And using various, various uh, top tagging uh, techniques, uh, especially in the CMS analysis, we can probe such particles um, in, again, in the plane of ST, which is what CMS does shown on the right. And also Atlas chooses to look for the energetic tau uh, transverse momenta, which you see here on the left, uh, leptocoxy is given in light blue. And both analyses set very, very uh, comparable limits as you see on page, uh, on the next page uh, in the uh, leptocoxy mass uh, plane. Now the CMS uh, limits are presented in the plane of leptocoxy mass versus coupling strength because CMS was also actually probing uh, um, single production mechanism for leptocork with larger power coupling, which I didn't talk about much, but for small couplings at lambda less than one, it's, it really is, these two searches are identical. And again, the limits are in the one and a half TV range in this particular uh, complicated top tile newbie final state. And of course, it is not to say that these two things I just presented are the whole picture. This is just a very small part of the bigger picture, just to give you a taste on what CMS does. Um, here's a diagram as of this summer. So this is already a few months old and some of the things I talked today are not actually included in this diagram yet, but there are many searches in CMS and also in Atlas that, that look for various flavored and uh, lepton flavor and quark couplings across the spectrum. And some of these searches are still being conducted at run two. So uh, expect results, uh, let's say within the next uh, few months. Um, with that, I want to conclude and just on a, maybe on a personal note, um, we are now in the luminosity era, I would say, or people would usually say at the LHC. And the general tendency that you might see in BSM searches is to go for higher and higher masses because it's attractive, you get low backgrounds and so on. So if you want to set limits, that usually is the way to go. But in my opinion, low mass is an opportunity to actually learn about standard model. And what do I mean by that? Uh, shortcomings of our tools, our Monte Carlo, our theoretical understanding become more apparent with the increasing data set if we actually stay with high background searches, uh, if we co continue pursuing such searches. And these things can be things like mismodeling issues and very, very common standard model processes like Trellian, TT bar, Diboson um, processes. Differences between different generators, PAHEC versus MATGRAPH, differences between different calculations of higher order corrections. And you know, famously, you can think of the uh, muon G minus two anomaly of different theory groups sort of battling at the moment, I would say, uh, let's say um, cheekily. But um, the, the point is there are things to be learned. And one, one example here is on the right is the, the ZZ transverse momentum spectrum as measured by the CMS experiment. And here you can see that there are three different generators, matrix generator, power generator, and the matchcraft generator that actually quite significantly disagree in their modeling of something very fundamental like the, the transit momentum of the ZZ and ZZ production at the LATC. And 
So this is, a, in my mind, a very good motivation for pursuing uh, very broad searches, going to lower masses in the upcoming uh, years at LHC. So we should, I think, treat signal models as single, single generators and probe as wide of a final state as possible. And in this regard, we might be onto a precision era for BSM searches with no easy discoveries, but but small tensions, learning more about the model may lead to discoveries. And to finish on a positive note, all these hints of various tensions that you have heard or will hear in these sets of lectures, searches for BSM physics are intriguing as ever, and we only scratch the surface of the data set we'll have. So thank you. All right, thank you so much uh, for the Marvelous talk. So time for a couple of questions. Anybody? If not, I have a question. So um, for the Leprook works, what are the, the projections for uh, for the high luminosity LAC numbers? Are they done by CMS, the scope studies basically? Do you know roughly the numbers? Um, I should look up also. I'm not fully aware of uh, projections, um, but if the, the key is if you only uh, hinge on luminosity scaling mm -hmm. without actually improving the analysis, the moment you go beyond the TV, the gains become really unimpressive with, with increasing luminosity. So, um, so I wouldn't, Long story short, I wouldn't take those projections too seriously. They're usually much more pessimistic than what we eventually uh, achieve. Um, but, but, but to be honest, I'm not aware of the top of my head any any concrete studies uh, done for uh, large, uh, much larger data set. But, but, but the real gain, which we I think should keep in mind, really comes from doing a better job of distinguishing such final states, so tagging tops uh using other machine learning techniques uh building more sensitive probes for a specific signal model if you're into a specific signal model luminosity really helps at at the low mass which as i was advocating hopefully uh we should probe but uh yeah yeah all right thank you so are there any further questions If not, thank you so much again uh, for, for this marvelous talk. Um, so just an announcement that we'll start um, shortly at, uh, as per the schedule at 2.30 after lunch session. Okay, so we add on, yeah. Shima, you want to announce anything? No, thanks. Okay, thank you. I thank just you so have much a... again. Thanks, Halil. Good to see you.